Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Buck Brief. On this episode, we have Catalina Lauf with us. She is the founder of the Defense of Freedom PAC, formerly ran for Congress in a uh, tough race, and we appreciate her being here. She just got back from the U.K. She may be a little jet-lagged, so we can talk about some U.K. stuff, too. I just got back from Scotland last summer. I love it up there, but they are communists. I don't know what happened to them, but their politics, great people, beautiful country, terrible politics. Yeah, I think they're just too close to Russia and all of the mess over there. No, they've, unfortunately, they've been sucked in by the the globalist UN type of mentality where they want to be part of Europe, but yet some of them want to be independent and still remain pretty Western, especially when it comes to the economic system. But they're just being, you know, unfortunately manipulated a lot. Their media is un- so, if we think ours is corrupted out here when it comes to just liberal mainstream media mayhem uh, over there is just beyond horrible. Uh, their their government run news is entirely. Uh, did you ever did you ever see that exchange from with the BBC presenter and Jordan Peterson where she keeps saying, well, well, well in other words, in other words. And he's like, no, no, not not in other words. You know, they're kind of going back and forth. But she keeps saying in other words to change what he says to be something she can attack. And she does it over and over and over again. I just thought it was amazing that someone could be paid to do something as straightforward as interview people on TV and be as bad at at, at it as the uh, BBC. Pre- I can't even remember her name, but she was pretty horrible. Um, I, I did want to ask you, actually, it's funny. because You just came back from the UK about uh, the royal family. First of all, do you watch The Crown? I thought some of it. Yeah. Some of it? That's it? Only some of it? Okay. Wife and I are watching this thing now all the time. Are you, how, how much have we talked? you seen like two episodes? What are we talking about? No, I saw the first couple seasons, and I'll tell you why, and then I want to hear your perspective. But I, as a British history lover, I believe that sometimes, you know, if it wasn't, it's not the Tudors, the crown seemed a little too slow for me. Uh, there wasn't enough you know, scandal like the Tudor court. And I don't know how historically accurate it is. So that was my qualms with it, why I didn't watch the whole thing. But what were you going to say? I mean, it was, I think it's pretty, on the broad strokes, the historical accuracy is there. He, here's what's here's what's going on. So as you know, I do a radio show uh, with my man, Clay Travis, you know, like 500 stations, no big deal. And uh, we argue about this. Uh, we argue about this sometimes because he thinks that the British royal family is fascinating and classy. And I think that monarchy is at best a quaint anachronism and really more kind of bizarre and something that people need to just like let go of. Now, I'm not going to tell people in Great Britain that they should stop with this bizarre uh, obsession about, about, you know, that's their own thing. But for Americans, I don't understand this at all. Like, I'll watch The Crown because it's entertainment. And I think the royal family is for entertainment purposes okay i guess kind of like the kardashians in this country you know or or reality tv to some degree um i don't understand why anyone has as an american any affinity for them clay is a big queen elizabeth fan that's how this comes up i'm like why what 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 did she do you know shows up and does the sort of uh, little hand wave thing that they do that's it well, you know that they account for billions of dollars of the UK economy. So I think they have a financial reason to keep them around. Uh, but I wait, will wait, how, what do you mean billions? Like how so? What billions of dollars? How? By selling TV rights tourism. for interviews or something? Oh, tourism? Tourism. Yes. The amount they, I believe, are the number one. Like They completely sustain most of the economy when it comes to tourism because Americans are so obsessed with English history as a whole, you, you go to in- the UK and you've been, all of these castles, anywhere that you go, they're all, a lot of them are either owned by the family or they're they're pretty much maintained by a national trust, especially parks and things like that. And so, I mean, they just attract visitors from everywhere because, I mean, it's cool. Even where, you know, I was spending some time there and you have, you know, a Roman wall from, you know, 900 years ago. You're talking about Hadrian's Wall or? No, that's, yeah, well, that's a lot north, but there are a lot of different 
like ruin areas. Oh, okay. And yeah. um, and it's I mean it's so interesting. I mean it, there is it is an interesting thing. They've gone through so much. Think about a country that was completely attacked for centuries, and they've somehow maintained and were at some point uh, the the greatest empire in the world until you know we came along and destroyed them in 1776 but there is a lot of history there so i understand why americans are so enthralled with not only the history but then the magic of the so royal you're, family you're, you're one of them you buy into this whole <laughs> royal family this this whole fable of i mean it, it's it, it, look, look at some of the royals you go back the last uh i don't know the last hundred years or so you had the abdication king right the guy who stepped down who was the the brother of the guy who was stuttering. And then we had the whole movie about how he overcame his stutter. Um, I w- I had a speech impediment as a child. So I'm sort of like, yeah, a lot of us overcome stutters. I don't know. It doesn't mean that you're like a global hero, but anyway. Uh, so he, we have, we have that guy who we find out is actually a Nazi, th- not the stutterer, but the uh, guy who abdicated. He's a Nazi sympathizer who wanted the Nazis to put him in charge. If they were able to uh, sue for peace with the British. And then you have Prince Andrew who we know, not good, not good. What's going on there? Yeah, he's in some, and uh, and then there are a lot of people that I don't even follow the Charles and Diana stuff. I mean, he didn't do anything like criminal or awful, or he's not a traitor, from what I understand. But I don't know. I just feel like these people are are uh, to your point. Yeah, Buckingham Palace, keep it as a museum, sure. But do we need people walking around as museum pieces with everyone acting like we should listen to what they have to say? Like I don't care what any of these undereducated trust fund babies have to say about anything in the British royal family. And I give you Meghan Markle as my final, my final addition to this. You know, she ruined that. She ruined the royal family for me. Uh, I will say loved the Tudor era, loved, you know, Queen Elizabeth the first. I think there's a lot to learn from all of their faults in a lot of ways, but there was also, again, history. I mean, when you look at something like the Tudor dynasty, I mean, they changed history. Henry VIII broke off from the Catholic Church, divorced his wife, and that's arguably what created, you know, a, a sector of Christianity to, that eventually came to our country. So there's a yeah. lot I think I think to he, learn. He, uh, but I, I do agree. With he chopped now. off some of his wife's heads. You know, we have a church founded on the family values, as Hitchens used to say, of Henry VIII. It's probably not a good thing, you know. That, that, that's pretty intense. Like I've seen some arguments and I've seen some rough divorces from afar. Um, but, but, uh, sending your wife to the guillotine is, uh, or, you know, to the headsman's ax. That's, I mean, it's history. You're right. It's fascinating as history. Don't get me wrong, but I, you know, I don't know if like the church of England is something that is, uh, I mean, it's really more of a social club now. Let's be honest. Like the Anglican church. <laughs> anyway, it's all, my dad is an Anglican. So I can say this It's like, give me a break. The whole thing. Um, you know, just be Catholics and give it and, and give it a rest. So, uh, all right. So we don't agree on the British royal family. That's one thing. I'm going to need you to explain then to me, um, because you are you are barely a millennial, right? You're almost Gen Z, but you're a millennial. Where are you? are like you're like a I'm honored. That I think I'm Gen Z. Um, yes. No, I'm a I'm a I'm a full out millennial. You're a full but... on millennial. OK, I thought you were like custom yes. millennial Gen Z. All right. Well. You can explain the Taylor Swift. I can be 25 today. It's okay. There we go. You can explain the, how do you have to, how old do you have to be to run for Congress? Isn't it 25? Right? It is 25. Yes. See? Yeah. So see, you could have. Uh, Caroline Levitt, I think, ran when she was 26 up in New Hampshire, and now she's probably going to be Trump's White House press secretary. So, you know. Yeah. There's, there's that. Um, I got to I got to talk about a sponsor here for a second. We come back though. You can explain why people. So you just tried to tell me that the British royal family, Americans are allowed to be obsessed with it because of history. And I'm sitting here like, okay, what? I mean, we, we could go, we could go many rounds on this one. I want to know why people should care about Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey, and the conspiracies that were around this for a while that were floating around. Do you, do you buy into any of them? Also, we'll ask you about UFOs and JFK since run conspiracies, if we have time. Uh, but first up, do you feel prepared because with everything going on in the country, You should be thinking about defending yourself, protecting your home, and protecting your finances now more than ever. One form of financial protection, diversification. Gold has often been used to protect assets against inflation. It's a global reserve asset, and countries are buying massive amounts of gold as a hedge against financial collapse. It's time to protect yourself and invest in gold. Stop thinking things are going to get better. You need to look out for yourself and your family. My friends at the Oxford Gold Group will help you understand why you need gold in your 401k, 
why you should have gold on hand as well. It's easy. It's simple. The Oxford Gold Group is there to help. Go to OxfordGoldGroup.com slash free. Order the free investment guide. Or if you make a purchase of precious metals, you can earn up to $2,500 in free gold. I've got Oxford Gold Group gold right here in my studio. Got it locked away. It's good to have. OxfordGoldGroup.com slash free. OxfordGoldGroup.com slash free. Are you a Taylor? What, what, are you a Swifty? A Taylor Swift fan? Is that something that we would say? Explain to explain yourself. Absolutely not. And I'm appalled by the women in my generation that are so obsessed. She's like a cult leader for millennial women, all the way down to I mean even younger. There's you know seven eight year olds that are obsessed with her as much as. 30, 35 year old women are. I don't understand it. I do not understand it. Uh, I am not a Swifty by any means. And I'm sad that this is what, you know, America's culture has turned into. You know, I'm a, I'm a Stevie Nicks gal. You know, I was, my heart was born in the seventies and I just do not understand the obsession with, with Taylor Swift nowadays. I don't get it. But it seems like adults even, are, are asking all these questions about Travis Kelsey, whom I only know of now. Apparently, he's very good at football. I only know about him because of this Taylor Swift phenomenon because I'm trying to read the news for adults. And the number one thing, this is why, like, I, you know what? You're actually uh, helping me uh, illuminate something that I've just figured out about myself. I like the Daily Mail a lot, but the thing that drives me nuts about the Daily Mail as a news source is there's all this crap about Meghan and Harry. You know, Harry who's just like, I'll just do whatever Megan says or whatever Megan wants. You know, he's the most boring buffoon on the planet. And uh, we just want our privacy. That's why we're doing interviews because of privacy. Uh, and then you've got all these celebrity, you know, uh, these celebrity things like the Taylor. So it's, I open up daily mail. I'm looking for their good news. And it, what they give me is a lot of stuff about Taylor Swift and the British Royal family. Um, why, why is it that people don't realize it is a it is a giant waste of time and people will probably tell me it's a waste of time for me to even talk about it now, but it got so much attention that I'm, this is cathartic for me. Why do people waste their time caring about celebrities, personal lives? This, I've honestly never understood this at all. Like I don't really get it who someone is dating or whatever. Yeah. I wish them well. It's great. I hope they are like very happy, get married, have lots of kids. Why does wh explain like to me where this comes from? This desire to like dig into the relationship is it real? Is it just for the cameras? Yeah, I I honestly think it began in the Kardashian reality TV era, and I do believe that you know Ray Dalio a long time said that for so long it was never culture never ran politics, and now it's the opposite. We're living in a time where all of these cultural things, you know, Taylor Swift, now how she's involved with, you know, supporting Biden. It's like the somewhere along the way um, that impacted our culture and now it's bleeding into our politics. But I believe that it's just because we're living in this reality TV era where, you know, we don't have people that are talking about the substantive issues. I mean, you are, and there are others in, you know, our our lane of things that want to talk about things that matter, but we've just become so dumbed down as a society. And unfortunately, I, I'm embarrassed that a lot of, you know, women are kind of, that's all that they want to talk about instead of talking about ideas or philosophy or history or, you know, politics and things like that. And we're just so, this it's, again, it's, they make so much money off of it though, too. I mean, think about how much money Taylor Swift made off of all of these concerts and these women being, these women being obsessed with her and now with her relationship. I believe that it started because of the reality TV era that once we broke that, you know, the proverbial, what do they say that not the invisible hand, but that Fourth in wall? a theater, the wall, yes. Fourth wall. Once yeah. we broke that in reality TV, it completely changed the game. And unfortunately, I, I don't know if we can go back. Um, you know, you don't see as much reality TV going on. And I guess you, people still care about relationships and things like that. But now it's just in your face all of the time. Well, and I just, I, I, I just, would understand it if, if people were, were generally rooting for others to, to be happy. Uh, but obviously that's asking way too much because I think people like to revel in the misery of others. Uh, let's actually talk about, about social media in a second. Cause did you see on Capitol Hill, I think it was a week ago, 
all these members of Congress were like, I want accountability for Facebook. And they're like yelling about all this stuff. Do you know what I'm talking about? This just, oh, you might have been yes. in the UK when this was going on, but this was the big thing was they were having, and then they, that, that, then they have Mark Zuckerberg who's like, okay, I'm like really sorry. And we're, you know, and no, Mark Zuckerberg's worth like $80 billion more this week than he was last week. Like none of this. Stuff. Let's talk about the social media stuff here in a second. You can agree with me, but I'm going to let you think about this one. People that talk about banning TikTok, this is just like red meat that's fed. No one ever thinks this through. You're not going to ban TikTok. It doesn't actually do anything. But I know that's controversial and everyone on the right's like, Buck, I thought I could trust you. We'll, we'll talk about it in a second. I want to talk to you about my friends in American financing for a minute. They've been helping neighbors save money for 25 years, and they saved customers an average of $854 a month last year by letting people tap into their home's equity to pay off high-interest debt. And with mortgage rates dropping into the fives, now's a great time to call American financing. All it takes is a 10-minute call to 866-890-9392. They never charge any upfront fees. That's why they have over 7,200 Google reviews and a 4.7-star rating. They've helped thousands of customers, including me. I got my mortgage from American Financing. They help people save real money and put themselves in a better financial position. Call today to see what they can do for you. 866-890-9392. That's 866-890-9392. AmericanFinancing.net. NMLS 182-334. NMLSConsumerAccess.org. APR for rates in the five. Start at 6.406% for well-qualified borrowers. Borrowers. Call 866-890-9392. Details. For details about credit costs and terms. Okay. Catalina. Um, start with social media. Is it making us all dumber, ruining us, and people pretend they want to do something about it in Congress, but they don't? What do you say? I believe it does. You know, I was looking at a lot of these studies to bring up, you know, women again. It Studies show that it's actually making women more depressed, particularly liberal women, because they they are actually on social media more than conservative women are. And it, I do believe that it is making us dumber, uh, more sadder. Unfortunately, it's just, you know, it's just destroying relationships. It's just a distraction. And I know it's so important because in this age of communication, and it's amazing that you can have this medium to you know, share your life or even, you know, speak with others. I remember when Facebook first came out, how great that was to reconnect with people and, and all of that. But I think, unfortunately, it's gotten so big to the point where it's just feeding everybody. I mean, it's just it's a part of everybody's life. And we're not, I think we're taking away from human connection. We're taking away from the realities of life. And it's unfortunately, I believe, really impacting people's mental health. But everybody has a choice. You know, you have the choice to be on social media or spend eight hours a day on it or not. And uh, so I think it's it's amazing what technology has become, but I do believe that it's to the detriment of a uh, human, I don't want to say psychology, but uh, I guess human psychology. So they keep telling us that they want to ban TikTok, but they never ban TikTok, right? This is something that's bipartisan now too from members of Congress. I actually think that a lot of the time when you have congressional agreement on something uh that's at issue it's something to be like wary of you're like oh these guys all agree something's up like they're they're getting kickbacks or there's something to see there's something that they don't want you to see here um and i've been saying that they're not going to do it because here's my here's my theory okay and you can agree or disagree with me but this but agreeing with me uh catalina just means you're a brilliant person of excellent judgment so i'm going to throw that out there um they say that they want to get rid of tiktok and it's because they want to show China, like teach China a lesson. I'm sitting here like China is is engaged in the most sophisticated hacking operations and has been for 20 years in the history of the planet, stealing all kinds of sensitive information from companies, from government agencies, from everything. Um, there's so much that's going on that people aren't even aware of in terms of corporate espionage, all the rest of it. The idea that China is going to be some uh, power that will displace us because they know that I like to watch gun red meat and puppy videos on my phone is absurd to me. I know they keep saying, oh, they're going to have all your data. Like, I, I wouldn't use a Chinese-based chat app, and I know some people are, because you know, people can see that. I mean, they'll just know whatever it is you're writing. But I don't understand. I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm scrolling through the videos. I watch what I want to watch. 
And they're like, they're telling me that, oh, they're going to change your mind. They're going to do propaganda to you. I'm like, Google is already doing that. YouTube is already doing that. And they concern me a lot more than China does. I don't know. I'm, I'm off on my own on this one, though. So I'm just going to hand that off to you. I do understand. So there was actually a bill that they were working on just from what I've heard from the inside on Capitol Hill. It was a couple months ago. And there were certain provisions that they were trying to do in terms of the security aspect of China. So in terms of them being able to gain access to data and all that. So I, I think it's a hard one because if TikTok is just another medium, like you're saying that, you know, you watch things, you view things and it's actually, it's fine. You can make your own judgments. I do believe that the there's more nuance in the political aspect of it when it does come to data and privacy. And I think that um, unfortunately, you know, you're right. I mean, there are, well, anytime that, something's not getting passed and yet it could be for the greater good of both sides to put it that way um there is something a little more underlying there and i think that it's actually a lot more nefarious than we believe um, from an outside perspective do you go on tiktok i don't i've never downloaded it what? Uh, I, no it's it is but, super it is super addictive. I will tell you. You can blow through two hours waiting in the airport, uh, you know, for your flight or something if it's delayed, and you're you're just it can just take over your. I mean, maybe I'm making a case against it. I'm like it could take over your brain. But what were you gonna say? I I will tell you though, it has been a huge success for different companies, especially in the consumer packaged goods space. You look at all these different makeup pump companies or. Uh, again, you know, nutrition or CPG companies, it's been hugely successful to a lot of our companies here in a way that Facebook ads, Instagram ads just can't even compete because people are spending so much time on it. And when it comes to an advertising perspective, it for some reason, uh, you have a higher turnover, I'm sorry, a higher um, success Conversion, rate in yeah divert conversion rate in a, a product on TikTok than I believe any other form of ad on social media. And so it is very powerful from an ad and a perspective and also for our businesses. So that's also very tough too, especially in an economy like this, where it's traditionally hard to grow some of these industries. And here you go, something like TikTok is making some companies or keeping them in a survival state uh, because you'll have a mom that wants to buy things or, you know, makeup brands. Like I'm saying, I mean, it's just crazy how much um, money TikTok can generate for companies nowadays. And so now, I think that's an interesting thing. I, I'm going to cut up some parts of this interview and put it on TikTok. So you're going to be on TikTok. All right. So oh my God. Assuming, okay. uh, assuming this is going to go on TikTok, what is the one bit of health advice that you like to give people? I know you're into uh, holistic and alternative health. What is the one thing you're like, you need to understand the following about what you're eating or putting into your body or what you need to be doing or whatever. What is the one thing that you would tell as many people as you could via TikTok? Stay away from seed oils. Seed oils are destroying our bodies. They're destroying our gut microbiomes. They're aging us. Uh, stay away from seed oils. Look at the ingredients and anything that you buy from the grocery store. Uh, but stay away from seed oils, number one. And for the younger ladies in our audience who are not yet married and who are out there dating, I know you have a wonderful, wonderful boyfriend in the United Kingdom. I uh, have not met him yet, but I hear great things. What is the best dating advice you would give your generation of ladies right now? Like if you could sit them down and say, one thing that I think you need to know or that I wish someone had told me 10 years ago, whatever, what would it be? Never chase a man, ever. Men are supposed to pursue. Uh, chivalry is not dead. And timing has a lot to do with uh, finding a significant other. You have to be prepared. You have to be in a good spot. You have to be in your own. Um, have a, a positive sense of well-being on your own uh, before you know bringing having a partnership. Uh, it, it is all about timing. Got to be in the right mindset to want to settle down, have a family, have children and all of that. Um, but the right guy will, will come around. What's meant to be will find its way. 
and timing is a lot to do with it. All right. See, you stay to the end of the podcast. You get some great advice and maybe even some TikTok fodder from Catalina Lauf. <laughs> Catalina, thank you so much for making the time. Get some sleep. I know you're jet lagged and we will uh, talk to you yeah. again soon. Thank you.